Despite its near £100,000 price tag, the BMW i8 could be one of the best value cars on sale right now. Think about it. Beneath its aluminium and carbon reinforced plastic body shell, the i8 is bursting at the seams with technology. Most of which works a treat, and all of which will have cost BMW an absolute fortune to engineer. But before we go into any more detail about the how and why, what's the i8 like to drive? Is it a sports car? Is it fun? Or is it just a techno fest on wheels? So I know the i8 is predominantly all about its eco credentials and how smart it is as a sports car and how little carbon it throws into the atmosphere, etc. But, you know, it's also a proper sports car at heart. You put it in sport, you put your foot down, and it goes. It really, really goes. And it sounds bloody marvellous, actually. The i8 is a hybrid, of course, and as such, it's propelled by a combination of forces. The main thrust comes from a 1.5 litre, three cylinder petrol turbo engine. This produces 228 horsepower and 236 pounds feet of torque. But dial in the efforts of two different electric motors and the combined outputs rise to 357 bhp and 420 pounds feet of torque. And despite its 200 kilogram lithium ion battery pack, the i8 is also light for a hybrid, thanks to that carbon plastic and aluminium. So it weighs a pretty decent 1,560 kilograms. And that, in a nutshell, means it's fast. How fast? The performance figures all out. On to 60 in about four and a half, 4.4, I think. And it feels as if it would get to 100 in about 10. It, you know, it's properly fast in a straight line and it's really, really torquey. That is the big benefit that you get from the e-power and the fact that it's turbocharged together and they, they get another 20 horsepower out of the starter motor which is a really nice touch and, they, and the BMW said that that just fills the gaps between where the e-power drops off and the combustion engine kicks in. As a result you put your foot down in this thing and it goes like stink. No, it doesn't, it doesn't quite kind of sing like a 911 might sing, but the range of noises on display and just the mid-range thrust, it's, it's just wonderful. It really is a seriously exciting car to drive and to drive hard and properly. There are four different drive programs in the i8. E-Mode, Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport. The E-Range is around 25 miles and in theory the car has an overall range of around 1500 miles. But back in the real world though, fuel consumption rarely drops below 35 mpg no matter how hard you drive the car. And on more gentle motorway trips, the average is at least 60 mpg, which is pretty decent given that the 0-62 time is 4.4 seconds and in sport mode the i8 feels and sounds at least as quick as an Audi R8 V8. The steering is a electromechanical, of course it is, it's bound to be on a car like this. And there isn't much kind of touchy-feely loveliness coming through the rim, but the steering is very, very accurate. You can place the nose perfectly through any corner and although it's light, I actually really quite like the way this car steers. So the i8 regenerates its e-power via the brakes, but also when you're in sport mode, which I am now, by just giving a little bit of drag when you're off throttle. So basically at any time that you're not absolutely flat on the floor with the throttle, it's just kind of tickling itself electrically and regenerating battery power, which is great. That's exactly how the LaFerrari works. 
Another thing that I'm really impressed by is the brake feel. A lot of hybrids that harness their power via the brakes just have horrible feeling brake pedals. You kind of have this awful sensation that you're pressing against something and, and the car isn't actually slowing down. And yet, when you take your foot off the throttle, you feel as if you're just driven into a sea of treacle. The i8's not like that. There is this slight feeling of drag that you get when you come off the throttle, but it's not too strong. And the feel through the pedal itself, I mean, it's all fly-by-wire stuff, but the feel through the pedal itself is really, is pretty good. It handles properly too. It really does. It's got these pathetically skinny little tyres on it, front and rear. And if you really, really start to lean on it, yes, it does understeer, no question. But just to thread along a lovely road like this, which is quite kind of fast and fluid, it just feels lovely. It really does feel planted. It doesn't feel four-wheel drive. It feels like a really, really grippy, really well-sorted, composed rear-wheel drive car that just so happens to have phenomenal traction no matter what you do with the throttle out of any corner. And the balance it's got, mid-corner in particular, is lovely. And that, I guess, is because the centre of gravity is pretty low. I mean, I, I know this thing weighs 1,550 kilograms because it's got a battery pack, etc. But the flip side to that is that it allows the engineers to get the the weight really low because they put the batteries really low in the car and you can feel that mid-corner the i8 feels really really nicely balanced and just stuck okay so the other side of the i8's personality is what happens when you press e-drive the ride changes the ride becomes more comfortable Obviously, the exhaust note disappears completely. It becomes a milk float. Um, the throttle map changes, obviously, because you don't have a combustion engine under your right foot anymore. And I don't know, there's just, there's just something really intriguing and fascinating and, and quite nice, actually, about just bumbling around with no noise, no engine noise at all. And actually, because the tyres are so skinny, there's not much tyre noise either. You can just hear a little bit of gear wind from the, from the gearbox over the front axle, and that's it. It's kind of surreal, but it's kind of nice as well. I, I like driving the i8 in e-mode. So the next step up from e-mode is comfort, and it, it's basically in e-mode until you really nail it. And then the motor ch chimes in. That's quite nice, actually. So you can just, it's, it's all dependent on what you do with the throttle. If you're light with the throttle everywhere, you can kind of almost tease it into a staying in e-mode a little bit longer than it, than it normally otherwise would. But then if you nail it, because you suddenly need to overtake something, then the combustion engine is just right there. <laughs> it's quite cool, actually. And then you've got Eco Pro, which you get in other BMWs, where you get all these hints up on the dashboard here about how to drive, about how much throttle to use at any given time to get the absolute maximum out of the i8. And the absolute maximum theoretical MPG is 134, 134 MPG. And stick your foot down and it goes like a 911. That is a proper range of abilities. I think it's a great car. I really do. It's just, it's completely fascinating. Okay, it's not as pure to drive as a 911. Nothing like, really. But just the range of things that it can do and the way in which it does them, I think it's great. I really do. And I also think it's fantastic value at 95 grand. 94 and a bit grand. BMW says that it is not a lost leader, the i8. They say that no car would ever be given the green light if it didn't make a profit for the company. But I don't know, I'm not so sure I believe them at this moment in time because there is so much tech, there is so much clever stuff in this car. The fact that you can buy it for 95 grand is phenomenal. 
I really, really like the i8. I think it is probably the most interesting car I've driven this year that costs remotely sensible money. Okay, it's a kind of junior LaFerrari really, and for 95 grand, wow.